Well, the Chamber of Commerce, I got to tell you, we are very pleased to be welcoming the superintendent, Dr. Tammy Campbell, to offer the keynote to our business community on the Federal Way Public School District. A passionate, transformational leader who builds a shared vision and strong collaborative relationships, Dr. Tammy Campbell brings over 18 years of experience as an educator, a principal, an executive director of teaching and learning, an executive director of instructional programs. Her experience includes a leadership role at the University of Washington Center for Exceptional Leadership, and most recently, she was an assistant superintendent for learning and teaching at another district. At another district. <laughs> her upbringing as a young girl in the Louisiana Delta convinced her that schools are game changers, both for students and the communities they serve. That awareness led her to accomplish many firsts in her family, including high school valedictorian, the first college graduate, the first doctoral student, and at every milestone, she would reflect on her journey and the key people who lifted her toward her dreams. She came to realize that those who shared her journey without fail were teachers. First and foremost an educator, Dr. Campbell is well known by many of her fans for her relentless focus <laughs> and commitment to increasing student achievement for every student. She is skilled in developing systems of support that ensure teachers and principals can do the important work they need to do on behalf of students. Modeling a learner's stance and incorporating principal and teacher voice in the implementation of all major initiatives are essential to a successful implementation of those support systems. So over the course of her educational career, she has framed her leadership approach so, so that student results are the focus. Staff voice and empowerment are essential. Authentic community and family partnership support efforts and data coupled with research-based best practices are the guide to building systems of support and accountability. Ladies and gentlemen, in a state where legislation is creating an educational caste system for districts like ours, which must rely on levies for equitable school resources, we have Dr. Tammy Campbell. In a country where the merit of public education, and I can't believe I'm going to say this out loud, is actually a discussion in any kind of national debate, we have Dr. Dam Tammy Campbell. And in a world that lately seems to struggle with its rich legacy of immigrant heritage, the district's diverse cultures and their 112 languages have Dr. Tammy Campbell. But what does Dr. Tammy Campbell have? Let me tell you. She has a legion of dedicated, caring, hardworking, charming, and I dare say brilliant individuals who share a passion for providing a safe and inclusive environment that's focused on the education of our children. And better yet, she has those children, student scholars, who this chamber knows are the workforce that is going to fight ignorance and poverty through job creation and innovation. Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Tammy Campbell. Well, Becca, I don't think I have to speak. I, I, think, I think Becca did it for me. What do you think? That was pretty incredible. Students have to tell you, and one of the things that I want you to recognize is that even in moments like this as adults, my stomach is sort of rolling around a little bit. And whenever that happens, I just ground myself, and I just want to speak to you from the heart. And I want to start out by telling this community how grateful I am that you've entrusted me to be the superintendent of this school district, the caretaker of our future and, and our kids. So I want to thank you authentically from the bottom of my heart for that. I would like to acknowledge our city and state officials that are here today, members of the chamber board, our community at large, our district administrators, and students that are here today. And I'd like to have our students to please stand.
all of our students this time. We wanted you to be here today because the work is always on behalf of you. You're the motivators, you're the drivers for the work we do every day, and I want to have you right in front of me to remind me of those things that we're committing to. I would also at this time like to have the Federal Way Public Schools Board of Directors to stand. The board superintendent partnership is, is one of the most important ingredients in district and school success. I would like to thank you for your commitment to this work and literally the dozens of hours that we have spent as a team getting calibrated and clear so that we can do the right things for our students. So thank you. As I look across the room and I see the number of people who are here today to learn more about the state of Federal Way Public Schools, it speaks to our community's commitment and appreciation of the essential and necessary role that schools play in the overall economic, social, cultural, and overall health of our city. The health of each of our schools is the business of our community. It is your business. The work we do every day represents the cradle of this city's future. We're educating the next wave of leaders, business owners, taxpayers, activists, neighbors. What is unique about education though, and what's unique about this presentation, is that we're not producing widgets or products that require a specific algorithm or calculation. Reaching and teaching every student well requires a specific pedagogical skill, and that's a fancy word for how we teach. It demands passion and calling in what we do. And because in public education, we don't get to sort or select which children we educate, it requires an unshakable belief in their potential, in the potential of each and every one of our student scholars. This morning, I will not be really giving you a speech. The work is too complex to attempt to capture in the written word alone. I want to take you on a visual tour to the incredible work that's happening in our 39 sites every day. And I want to point you to the district administrators who are around this room who make it happen every day for our kids and the teachers who are not here who do that as well. So we are honoring them in their absence, but what you're about to see is a testament of that, those efforts. All too often, isolated and negative occurrences become the major headline for what is happening in schools. And you can think about some of the recent events that have happened. I would like to proclaim that great things are happening for our student scholars in Federal Way, and they're happening every day all across the district. And this particular clip will share a little bit of that example. We are excellence. We put more student scholars into international baccalaureate and advanced placement courses through academic acceleration. We encourage excellence from all of our student scholars and offer unique college and career pathways through programs such as Project Lead the Way. From rigorous study, hands-on learning, to individualized learning, we strive to give every student scholar a personalized experience. To ensure rigorous real-world application, we have adopted state learning standards and standards-based grading and reporting in our classrooms. And we're setting the bar for the best practices in family and community engagement. Approximately 2,500 staff members, including principal leaders, educators, paraprofessionals, bus drivers, student support services, counselors, nutrition services, facilities and maintenance, and central office staff are committed to our student scholars' success. We are innovation. With one of the first public academies in Washington State, a unique partnership between educators and nonprofits and the tech industry, we redefine public education in science, technology, engineering, and math. We are community. Federal Way has 112 languages. At 39 sites across the district, you will find excellence, innovation, and community. We are Federal Way Public Schools. So that's just a sample of some of the highlights of what we know is happening across the district. 
Before you leave today, I want to point to what four outcomes we have and that I hope you would say and share with folks if you were to talk about your experience. We're going to provide a virtual tour into the incredible opportunities afforded to our student scholars. We want to deepen your understanding of the students we serve. Do you know who the students are in Federal Way? I'm going to be outlining for you our organizational strengths and our areas for improvement, specifically those strengths and areas of improvements that surface through my 100-day plan. And then I want to outline a very clear plan for improvement through our strategic planning efforts, both short-term and long-term efforts. You've heard a little bit about the profile of the district. I want you to take a minute and I want you to see what's up there that might surprise you in terms of who we are. Our extended graduation rate was 81%. We've got free and reduced rates of about 58%. 23,000 students that we're educating. So as you can see, there's a complexity to the organization. When you look, if you were to have 20 students from across the district, here's our racial profile. Take a moment. Think about what this means for our city. Also, we have students who are socioeconomically disadvantaged. 12 out of 20 of our students would fit that bill. Three of the, our students out of the 20 would receive special education services. Three out of them would also be categorized as limited English speakers. So as you think about that diversity, I want you to see the opportunities that we have and that we believe that diversity is our strength. And we can't see it as a setback, but we have to see how we can build upon that diversity moving forward. I want to share with you now a little bit more about the organizational strengths and what I learned through my first 100 days. You're familiar with the goals? We talked to a host of stakeholders, 38 principals, 28 central office staff, over 1,000 staff members and family members. We also engaged in a multitude of activities to gather this information. And you've, many of you in the room have seen that. I went to 39 sites, visited all the schools, and I want to share with you what we heard. The guiding questions that we asked, what is working well in Federal Way Public Schools? What isn't working well? And what do they expect of their superintendent? And here's what they said. The family and community feedback was that what was working well was communication and culture at each of their child's school. Most families felt pretty good about the schools that their students attended, and they were really proud of that. They felt that the support from the classroom teacher was there. And they also felt positive about family and community engagement. And this last quote about the family liaisons at elementary was a highlight that we heard from all of our families across the district. Our staff, when we asked them what was working well, again, they felt really good about the team spirit that was happening inside of the schools, the PLCs, you'll hear me talk a little bit more about that, but more importantly, the support that they received through the coaching model. And if you're not sure what I mean about coaching, it's where we have other teachers working with teachers so they can get better at teaching our students. What did our families say that we needed to improve on? And they talked about academics. They wanted to see our academic results improve. And I will be sharing with you some of the strengths of our academic results as well as some of the areas that I think our families are talking about. They talked about a need for more interpreters. When you think about 112 languages spoken, there is definitely a need for that. So that when they come into schools, they want to have access to those programs. They want to be able to communicate with their teachers about what their students need. And so that was an area. School lunches, believe it or not, we got a lot of feedback at elementary that the school lunches needed to be improved, the quality, the freshness, and how uh, students were dumping out a lot of food, even our students who were really uh, in need. So that was another area. Communication on grades was one that really popped out. And this comes up for our secondary students. What we hear is that you have grades online, but the teachers are not inputting those grades in a, in a fashion that's up to date. So I'm looking online, I'm thinking things are fine, only to find out that it's not. So that was another area that our families told us that we could improve upon. And you know about the late starts. We got that feedback right away and immediately went to an early dismissal. And lastly, discipline and misbehavior. We often hear from families who say, okay, we've got a student who's misbehaving, what are you gonna do about it? 
Well, we have to educate them. And I'll tell you what we're doing specifically through our strategic planning and our long-term and short-term efforts around this topic of behavior. <laughs> our staff, when we ask them what's not working well, here's what they said, minimal or no curriculum. They felt like they're having to recreate the will. And what we also know is that we have many new teachers. And often for those folks to be recreating curriculum takes a lot of effort and energy. They talked about the school culture and student discipline. Again, that was another area that our staff talked about, as well as the substitute shortage and access to technology. Bottom line, the quote was, we need training on discipline and behavior management. Those were the big ideas from our staff. Well, what do they expect of their superintendent? And I wanted to be really transparent about that. They wanted a superintendent who focused on, on improving academic achievement. And this is from the families and community. They wanted a superintendent who's visible and accessible in schools. And they wanted a superintendent who improved communication, school lunches, and safety and security. You've got school lunches sitting right beside safety and security, so think about the importance of that. Here's the quote, I want to see a superintendent who sets the vision, direction, and leads with transparency. Staff had very similar feedback to me that they wanted accessibility and visibility. They want someone who understands their school, which is why being out in the schools really helps with that. Clear and consistent communication, and they want a superintendent who maintains a focus on students, as well as addressing that lack of curriculum. That was another big idea. So now what I want to transition to is talking a little bit about organizational strengths. What makes Federal Way great? The first area is our instructional innovation. The fact that this district uses standards-based grading and reporting is to be commended. It means that we're no longer grading students based on averages or some random criteria. We're actually using state standards to do that. And I think that puts us on the, on the map. I know this is an area that we can get better at, but that's certainly one of them. I think that the piece that we're doing around engineering pathways at secondary, we're really working to be sure that our students are career ready. We're partnering with industry and local experts to be sure that our students are having these experiences in the high school. You probably don't know this, but our beginning teacher assistance program is known statewide. The governor came and observed it and talked about it, and it was the impetus for them increasing funding. And so this is another area where we're supporting new teachers as they come into our district. This is another highlight. Community is an area of strength. And I specifically am thinking about some of the family and community engagement work that uh, Therese Moore, for example, has been leading, where we meet uh, on a monthly basis with our key communicators. And we're really reaching out to the broad, diverse group of community. So I ask you, when you look around this room and you think about the students that we serve, how many of our meetings reflect that diversity? And we are going to have to be thinking about how we amplify those, that participation because when families are empowered, they're much more likely to have the resources and support they need to educate their students. I want to also commend this community for the tremendous support you gave us on our recent tech levy. Passing at about 61%, 10 points higher than it had in previous, the previous levy, it says a lot about your commitment. And I want to thank you for that. But we see... We see our community as a real asset. And this particular puzzle piece is, cr is critical, or puzzle and the pieces that are there. We're highlighting many of the individuals who are in this room who have waived signs, who have raised funds for STEM, who have volunteered, who have gone to our schools and made sure that for the holidays our students had presents who have done incredible work. These are our sheroes and heroes, and if you're not up there, it doesn't mean that you're not one. We just only had a limited page. But we wanted to really capture and thank you and tell you how much we need you. Schools cannot do this work alone, and I want to give the folks in this room a round of applause, so thank you. And right at the heart, those students, always keeping them front and center. Another organizational strength, I don't know if you know this, but our four high schools are in the top 1,500 high schools across the nation. How many of you knew that? Anybody know that? So this is something we should be really bragging about and talking about. And it's based on our students' access to advanced classes. 
And Federal Way has been on the cutting edge of, for, of this work, and it continues to be. So that's one fact we need to tell our realtors and everyone else as they're moving into the, into the area that all four of our high schools are in the top 1,500. There are not very many districts who can make that claim to fame. So high school principals around the room, middle school principals who help get them there, and elementary principals who help them there, hats off to you. I want to give you a round of applause. Another spotlight is our Technology Access Foundation Academy. I don't know if you know this, but TAF Academy has won the School of Distinction for four years in a row. Four years in a row. I want you to pay especially close attention to that 92% graduation rate, the 100% graduation, graduating students who attend college, and I want you to look at this graph, and if you look at those blue bars, you can see across many subgroups where we see gaps, they're closing a lot of those gaps. That's why they've gotten that award. They're a hidden secret, and we wanted to really spotlight the efforts that are happening at this particular site. And to do so, I want a student to help me to do that. So I want you to pay especially close attention to what she's sharing. I'm Sarah, I'm a sophomore here at TAF Academy, and I created a watch with two other people for sickle cell anemia. So what this watch does, it tracks the hydration levels of sickle cell anemia patients. So it's supposed to prevent crises, and these crises are very painful for sickle cell anemia patients. And these are brought on by dehydration, stress, or illness. So what this watch does is that every half an hour will alert you to drink up, but for presentation purposes, it's 20 seconds right now. And then when you press button A, you're logging eight ounces of water into your intake. And then when you press button B, um, you're able to see how many ounces of water you've had so far in that day. And then when you do logo up, oh, so I've had 16 ounces so far. And then when you do logo up, it shows you how many ounces you've had out of 64. And then when you press button A and B, it shows your, you your temperature, and if it's too high, there'll be like a little sad face that goes across the screen and tells you to cool down. And that's my project. How many of you were doing that in high school? <laughs> <laughs> and what Paul will tell you is that every student has an opportunity to engage in that type of real world, hands-on, integrated type of learning. That's what makes it a very special place. I want to also shine a spotlight on FWAPA. As many of you know, it's a six through 10 configuration, and they really focus on personalization, small learning environments, college preparatory experience. Let's take a peek. Let's give that team and Kurt and the teachers there a round of applause. We have other organizational strengths, and one of them is our work around PLCs, professional learning communities. And what we see is our teachers are working in collaboration with each other, and if you were to go to any of our schools during the early release time, it's really important that folks understand how important it is that teachers have time to get better at their craft. They're looking at student work. They're looking at data. They're looking at various pieces so that they can go back and refine their practices so that when they're working with students, student learning improves. And we have really done a lot of professional development and support. So as people talk about what are they doing on those early release days, we're using that time so that we can be better when we get back in the classroom with students. I want you to think back to when you were a student in class and 
How many of you remember seeing a, tar a learning target on the board that says, I can do this, or that was very intentional? I would imagine very few of us had those opportunities. Because when we were in school, often what happens, the teacher had an idea, they presented something that was based on their interest. Now what we do when we teach students, we make sure that we have a standards-based learning target at the beginning of every lesson. So that students know what they're learning, they know why they're learning it. And if you know someone who's in school or you have a student, you should be asking them, what was your learning target today? This really does ensure that there is no lost time and there's intentionality in instruction. And the expectation is that you would see this at all of our schools, no matter the site. Here are other examples. We pulled these from some of our elementary and our middle schools. Might be hard for you to see, but you can see. They, we call them I can statements. I can determine if two fractions are equivalent. So they know at the beginning and at the end what they're supposed to be doing. More examples. Safe and learning focused schools. This is an important area that we see as a spotlight. Right now, all of our middle schools are working on something called a restorative justice, where they're really focusing on not just punishing students. Here's what we know. You can suspend a student. When they go home and they're spending all day watching TV, I don't know how many of you, but do you think that's an intervention that's actually going to turn things around? No. What we know is we have to teach behaviors. We then have to have students to really think about the thing that can make it right in the school environment. And our middle schools are really piloting, piloting those efforts, as well as some of our elementary schools who are focused on PBIS. What you're going to be seeing in the coming weeks and months is a very clear plan across the district where we're training everybody on the common approaches. Right now what I would tell you is happening at some of our schools. What we need to talk about is what's going to be happening at all of our schools. So this is another area that Federal Way Public Schools is focusing. And lastly, I want to highlight the dual language program at Sunny Crest. Uh, we know that if our students are bilingual, they're going to have greater job opportunities. They will also have the opportunity to go back to their communities and as a result of that feel connected to their roots. And we also know that there's something about brain activity when you're bilingual that later on in life they probably will be fewer of those uh, adults who are struggling with some of the issues related to dementia and all of those other uh, issues when, when we don't use our brains as much. But bottom line, we're really proud of the work here and when we look at our data, these students are really uh, uh, achieving some really great results. So you've heard me talk about our strengths. Now what I want to do is be very transparent with you about where we can improve and I'm going to share with you some data that we've shared with principals but I think our community needs to know what those areas are and here are our areas for improvement. When you think about the roadmap region Post-secondary attainment is very important. 67% of the jobs in our state will require post-secondary education in 2018. So when we say a high school diploma is enough, we know that's not true. So think about that, almost 70%. And when you look at the actual roadmap region, we're looking at about 28% of our <laughs> students who are uh, ninth graders completing a two or four year degree within six years of high school graduation. That's the whole region, it's not just federal way. Then when you look and you think about the state, I want you to think about this for a minute. What are the chances that a Washington student will be attending college by the age of 19? We rank 47th in the nation in this area. So there's work for us to do. Not just federal way, but the state. Now what I want you to do is look at these indicators. When we looked at the region, all of the districts in the region around kindergarten readiness. Here's what we noticed. There are areas, certainly, that our students are doing well in, but there are other areas like mathematics where we have areas of improvement. But when you also look at our low-income students and the difference between them and our non-low-income, you can see the gaps are starting as early as kindergarten. So this really presses the point that we have to have a robust, strong early learning strategy to close those gaps. Another area that Federal Way Public Schools has to grapple with is chronic absenteeism. If you look at that shaded box, we're the second highest in the region. Chronic absenteeism. So take a minute to think about that. If you're not at school, you certainly can't be learning. So when we think about our strategic plan, we're going to have to have 
strategies that really tackle that. So we're 31st out of 33 Puget Sound districts. And this is interesting to note, it actually gets worse the longer the students are in the system. So our 11th, 12th, 10th, 11th, and 12th graders are where we really see it becoming a problem. Now I was talking to the, to the seniors and they're saying senioritis, I'm sure. Uh, but we have to grapple with this. So this is another area where we have to improve. Sixth grade reading, look at the districts in the region. You can see Federal Way. The quote I like to keep repeating is good as enemy of great and we've got to put it out there where we need to improve. So I want you to have some sense of that. Seventh grade math, you can see where Federal Way is. I, li I link this to though our curriculum challenges and the need for curriculum and what our teachers are telling us about curriculum and the investment in those uh, resources. And I, and I know we're going to see that turn around. So I've shared with you some data and I want you to know we've got a plan and we're going to see the results start to shift over time. And we believe our strategic planning efforts will do just that. So when you think about currently right now, each of our schools have their own school, impro their own school impr improvement plans that aren't necessarily aligned. The strategic plan will allow for that alignment to happen. As a result of that, we should have a roadmap for improvement. That and one of the things that we've been doing through our community forums, we've had five of them, and they have been robustly attended. And what we know will be the result of that is this shared visioning, the embracing of diverse voices. Last night at our forum that we had at Kylo, we had community telling us there are some pieces that are missing, you need to add that. We, we then made some adjustments based on that feedback. So we know that the strategic planning process needs to include our broad-based community leaders. I want to give you a sneak peek right now of what the goals are looking like for strategic planning. We have five goals that we fleshed out. The first is building the foundation for the early years. And I want you to take a minute to read what the goal statement means. Every scholar entering kindergarten will demonstrate social emotional readiness and meet or exceed, exceed grade level standards in ELA and in math by third grade. That's our first goal. Goal two, student engagement and empowerment. This is really critical because we think when students are more engaged that that should also uh, be a support to our, t our chronic attendance issues. Goal three, thriving, confident, responsible individuals. This is the piece around safety, discipline, students who take personal responsibility within their learning environments. And goal four, mastery of all subjects. Every scholar will receive equitable opportunities for success. And goal five, high school graduation through successful transitions. Those are the five goals. I want you to take a minute and I'd like you to turn to a partner and talk about the goal that you found the most intriguing. Talk to a partner, the goal that you found the most intriguing. Take two minutes to do that. Organizationally, we've not had goals like these. Next, what you would see if I were to roll this out would be the strategies. But more importantly, it's the metrics that we're going to use to measure whether or not we're achieving these goals. And we're going to be doing the dipstick three times a year so that we actually see if we're accomplishing the goals. When we talk to students, we ask them what goals they thought were most important. When we talk to 100 of them, do you know what they said? Readiness for college, career, and life. Second most popular was mastery of core subjects. Hold child, healthy, safe, challenge, support it was the third most popular. Successful transitions was fourth, and self-responsibility and self-discipline was their fifth most popular goal. So we asked our students to vet what it was that we had said was important as well. I want you to take a minute to listen to one of our students talking about the strategic planning. I'm not really sure how or why I was called up the only Federal Way High School student to be called up to uh, student voice. But I know that since I was elected, I was picked, it's because my voice matters. And every time I come here, 
I try not to hold back anything. I try to give my real opinions, uh, my real life experiences on subjects that are relevant because I know that my voice matters and that's why they picked me because they know that I'm going to give my real opinions, my real voice that that I, walk, I will work hard uh, with everyone to accomplish the goal, which is a strategic, strategic planning to make a, uh, a better future for students for tomorrow. And among those students includes my brothers and my sister. And I would be happy just to know that my opinions, my voice, has helped them in their future. It's pretty powerful. One of the strategies that I embrace, and I'm asking our team to embrace, is student voice and constantly consulting with students, and that'll be something you'll see happening over the course of the year. How many of you know what that image represents? Just speak it out. What do you think it represents? Internet activity? Internet activity? Facebook. It's the number of Facebook users worldwide. So I'm asking you, if this is Facebook now, by the time our students move through our system and out, we've got to be thinking about not a local economy, but a global economy. And our students need to be prepared for that. I also want to share with you that of the top 20 startup ecosystems in the world, Seattle is number eight. The jobs are here. Are our students going to be ready? How many of you w wanted your students to go to college? Raise your hand. How many of you wanted your students to go to college? I'm just curious. I want you to take a look around the room. Would you agree that's most of us, right? Here's what I want to challenge us to think about. We often say, well, everyone doesn't have to go to college, but often people want their own kids to go to college. <laughs> our job is to make sure that our students have the choice and the options. And here's one of the most important reasons why. I want you to look at that income disparity for the college grad and the non-college grad. Do you see that? And it's, it used to be it wasn't that wide, but now it's even wider. And so the notion of our kids being college and career ready, their very livelihood is at stake. So we should have high expectations for our students. And we know that these tech jobs are going to be awaiting our children. One of the things that we're pressing is this notion around 21st century skills. And so that's a big piece too. What I want to do though is really share with you the work that we're doing and what you can actually see very specifically. So the first piece of uh, focus for us is a systems approach. We will be doing district-wide strategic planning that will result in a strategic plan. We'll have common goals and metrics and school improvement plans at all schools. We will have common structures and resources across schools to support the goals within the strategic plan. Instruction. Common, high-quality, standards-based instructional materials. No more will teachers have to create these things at individual sites. We'll be doing this all across the district. PLCs, those early release days, time for teachers to actually to continue to get better at their craft. And here's the big one. Our facilities are dying. We have to think about modernizing our facilities so that they're learning spaces to accompany the kind of learning our students need. Innovation. You're going to hear more about lighthouse schools. We're going to have a STEM and a STEAM focus, one which, which really includes the arts at Nautilus K-8, as well as Woodmont K-8 focusing on STEAM as well as Sahali. This summer, we're going to have summer STEM enrichment camps all around our elementary schools, five-week experiences for kids, because here's what we know. By the age 11, they've already decided whether or not they can go in those career fields. We're expanding courses in advanced aerospace manufacturing, robotics, biomedical sciences, and our goal is an internship for every student before they leave our system.
communities and families. We are starting up parent academies at five of our K-12 sites where bilingual parents or will be training other parents on things that are important like how to apply for college. How do you support your student at home in the area of mathematics? We're enlisting parents for that. I will be launching a, stu a superintendent student advisory. Five students from each high school meeting with me once a month to tell me what's happening at their school so I keep a pulse on the school student culture. We have to do this. We have to triple the number of mentors that are in our schools. And we have to specifically do that at the sites where in those schools where we've had some recent issues. We've got to put our time where our mouth is and we've got to go in and start to think about connecting with our children. In late spring, we will be hosting a Federal Way Public Schools Heroes Banquet. It will be our first annual banquet where we'll be celebrating local leaders who are supporting and working with our schools, and we'll be working strategically with our CBOs to be sure they can help us with the goals in our strategic plan. Safety. We are moving towards common proactive discipline approaches across the district. No longer can schools determine, decide whether or not they're going to do that. We all have to do it. We've had a security review and we're going to take the learning back from that review and put in place some action around that. Again, modernization of our facilities is also a safety issue when you have buildings that have so many entrances from the outside that they no longer fit some of the plans that are being generated around modern safety. Lastly, I want you to hear from the class of 2028. There are kindergartners right now. <laughs> they have something to say to you, and I want you to hear what they have to say. When I grow up, I want to be a principal. I want to be a fireman. When I grow up, I want to be a police officer. When I grow up, I want to be a lifeguard. I want to be an artist. When I grow up, I want to be a teacher. I want to be a nurse when I grow up. I want to be a baker. I want to be when I grow up a zookeeper. Because you can help animals and be friends with the animals. My father's wear a coat and a shirt and a helmet. It protects them from water. And I want to keep them healthy. And I want to help babies. A police officer arrested bad people because they put up fires. When they, when they, when they're not safe, I can um, help them when they're drowning. So kids can get smart. So I want to leave you with this, some parting words. I want you to step up and lean into your neighborhood school. I want you to remember this. Every child is one caring adult away from being a success story. I want you to think about volunteering and taking on a student, and I want you to spread the word. Our children need us. What the best and wisest parent wants for his own child, that must the, com that must the community want for all of its children. And I want to leave you with this short story. I recently talked with board uh, member Claire Wilson, who shared that she had recently learned that her mother's caregiver was a former TJ student who was now a nurse. She described her initial feeling of surprise, then connection, and security in knowing her mother was in the hands of her former, former Federal Way student. Now think about the implications of that. The care of the person who had given birth to her was now in the hands of a student who had spent years in Federal Way. I say to each of you, you are your brother's keeper. Building a better, better federal way begins with investing time and resources into our schools. It's mentoring, volunteering, and supporting in a variety of ways. It's not blaming, it's stepping in, leaning in. What would it look like if each of you were to see 
each of our 22,500 students as potential caregivers of our mothers, fathers, children, sisters, brothers. That is a significant shift to see students not as other people's children, but as the lifeblood of our community. The Federal Way Public Schools team will proceed with a clear plan for improvement. I hope you heard that today. We will proceed with irrational hope in the potential of every student and the certainty that the best is yet to come for our student scholars. And we invite you, actually no, we insist that each of you join us in this most important work of being dream makers for our children. Thank you. Thank you.